Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, Amy Poehler, Burt Kreischer, and music from Wilco with Cleto and the Cletones. And now, Jimmy Kimmel! of you who are still drunk after Monday Night Football, we are coming to you from our home base in the heart of Hollywood, one of the strangest places in all the world, but we do get some competition from time to time. In fact, this is from the Sunday service at St. John the Divine Cathedral in New York, where parishioners were invited to bring their pets to be blessed in honor of St. Francis, the patron saint of animals. There were cats, there were dogs, there was a goose on site, there was a giant snake. They had um, uh, a, a baby crocodile, <laughs> look at that guy. A sloth paid its first visit to church in a basket, as did a very reluctant <laughs> little donkey who's probably an atheist that wanted no part of any of that. I was the lights up. There's also some horrific news over the weekend. Our friends and allies in Israel, innocent civilians killed and kidnapped by the terrorist organization Hamas. Israel is now at war. It's a nightmare situation. Uh, leaders from all around the world condemned the attack, as did millions of Americans, including our super-duper pro-Israel former President Donald Trump, who immediately found a way to make it about himself. He wrote, the horrible attack on Israel, much like the attack on Ukraine, would never have happened if I were president. Zero chance. That's right. If he was president, we'd all be blissfully downing jiggers of bleach. There'd be no war anywhere. <laughs> And then, because he was so upset about this tragedy, he posted a photo of himself from back when he and his waistline were still in their 40s <laughs> playing tennis. There's Subpoena Williams right there. <laughs> can you imagine? I mean, seriously. Can you imagine any, anyone else in the world doing anything even remotely like that? The guy who claims to be the most pro-Israel president of all time was in Cedar Rapids on Saturday, demonstrating the deep well of insight he has into this ongoing conflict in the Middle East. And I stood proudly with our friend and ally, the state of Israel, and I will do it again. You heard about today, the Hamas, Hamas terrorist invasion. Yes, the Hamas, the Baba Ganoush, the Falafels. <laughs> what they're doing is a disgrace. On the day, one of our closest allies is hit by a devastating terrorist attack. Trump is on stage talking about how much better his body is than Joe Biden's. He's got a consultant somewhere. This is the worst consultant in politics that thinks he looks good in a bathing suit, right? <laughs> no, he, he spends so much time at the beach. And, you know, how do you do that? And, you know, I have a much better body than him. <laughs> but I'm not really sure that I want to expose it with the sun blaring down and the sand, the surf, the wind, you know. You, I mean, you know, it's not a pretty sight. Yeah, he makes, <laughs> makes some really good points. Maybe instead of an election next year, we just have a wet t-shirt contest and end it. <laughs> this is Trump's focus now. This is the drum he's beating that Joe Biden, who's only three years older than he is, is too old. Different people vote, and they uh, sort of are locked into that vote, no matter how bad a guy is. If a man's grossly incompetent, he can't speak, he can't put two sentences together. He can't find his way off a stage. Let's see, there's a... Uh, I get there. I could jump off this one. I could actually do it. He couldn't. Yeah, all right. Do it, then. Let's see it. I mean, I would love to see you jump off that stage. I would... I'd make a donation. You're like Shamu flopping onto the observation deck at SeaWorld. <laughs> and if you're wondering after all the dumb and terrible things Trump has said and done, if there could, could there be anyone left who still supports this man? Well, there sure are. President Trump works for God, and God is all about America. 
and God is the one that's going to save America, but actually he's using President Trump as one of his tools. So that's why we support President Trump, because he works for God. Yeah, well, he's definitely one of God's tools, that's for sure. He's <laughs> the biggest tool God ever created. Trump has uh, reportedly decided now not to visit Washington, D.C. this week, not to the, and not to not throw his hat in the ring for Speaker of the House. Trump bailed on that like it was dinner with Eric. He is now backing <laughs> Jim Jordan for, uh, of Ohio for Speaker. He said Jim Jordan has his complete and total endorsement, or CTE for short. Meanwhile, Rudy Giuliani is having some financial trouble. According to the IRS, Rudy owes $550,000 in unpaid taxes. He has a half a million dollar lien on his condo in Florida, and he's being sued for millions by his own lawyers. I guess screaming outside a dildo factory isn't as profitable as, <laughs> as it used to be, right, Guillermo? <laughs> right, Jimmy, yeah. yeah. You did. Did, you have a, <laughs> did you have a good weekend? I had a great weekend, yes. What did you do this weekend? Oh, Jimmy, I went to the homecoming. What? I went to the homecoming, Jimmy. Are you in high school? No. <laughs> I took my son to the homecoming, but to, we had a to great the time. Homecoming. Yeah, <laughs> football. High school. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had a great time. Whose uh, whose homecoming was it? Oh, my uh, my neighbor's son. Oh, your neighbor's. Yeah, his son. His son is in high school. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. Anything, Benji wants to play football? Uh, Did you watch the Cowboys? Oh my God! What a disaster. Yeah, Terrible. that was not yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. All eyes this weekend were on uh, actually on Minnesota, where the world was wondering whether Taylor Swift would show up to cheer on Travis Kelsey. I was watching the game, my nine-year-old daughter walks in the room, she looks at the TV, she goes, is that Travis Kelsey? I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I, I really, I mean, was flabbergasted. And then she lost interest because Taylor did not make the trip. She, Taylor Swift was at the last two games cheering Travis alongside his mother, who has become a celebrity as a result of all this, Donna Kelsey, was even on the Today Show, and you can tell she is very, very excited. What was she like? What was yeah. it? Did, I mean, you, so you got to know her a little bit. She got to see her the couple games. How was it? It was okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Blink twice if the Swifties threatened your life. We both met her, and she's, we've always sort of just been delighted yeah. by her way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, you know, if we saw that kind of reaction on a bachelor hometown visit, you go, all right, somebody's not getting a rose, I guess. <laughs> Today, by the way, is both Indigenous Peoples and Columbus Day. Uh, Christopher Columbus was an explorer who didn't exactly discover America, but he did yell first when he got here. <laughs> and so today we thought it would make sense to speak to some modern explorers, some tourists out on Hollywood Boulevard, to ask them, foreigners to our land, to tell us what they find weird about us here in the United States. What is the weirdest thing about Americans? Nosy. <laughs> They're very nosy. Do an impression of a nosy American. A nosy American? Um, where are you from? <laughs> and then, my name's Karan, right? It's K-A-R-A-N, but I always get Karen, which is just so embarrassing. I've traveled the world, and let me tell you, nobody else says Karen except Americans. So I could go to a Starbucks, and they scream out Karen, and it's the most embarrassing thing ever, ever, ever. So let's say an American was walking down the street in Poland. How would you be able to tell they're American? They're loud. Very loud. Loud, and... If you see them at night, so they're usually drunk. If they come from here, they're most tanned in the skin and a little bit wider. Tanned fat people. Yeah. <laughs> they just eat and eat and eat and they don't care on the quality, it's just the quantity. Would you say they're a little fatter? Uh, a lot. When an American finds out you're from Australia, what's the dumbest thing they ask you? Someone asked me if there's kangaroos there. Like, <laughs> if there's kangaroos there. Obviously, there's kangaroos there. Can you do an impression of an American? I'll have a cheeseburger with french fries. Oh, I wanna... Uh, what kind of sauce do you have? Uh, I'll take the, take the steak. I'll take it well done with fries. Who's your least favorite American? I'll be, I'll be typical. I'll say Donald Trump. Who's your least favorite American? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. I don't really like Donald Trump. I'm so sorry. Draw the average American. The average American? I'm gonna get in trouble for this one. <laughs> so he's got his belly button out, uh, basketball shorts, obviously, and a larger-than-life drink, and then the baseball hat. 
someone who's happy, they love their country, they've got a nice family, and they're enjoying the sun. And they're super fat? No, that's, that's just bad drawing, there you go. Is that a Dorito they have for a vest? Yeah, why not, a Dorito, yeah. Any advice for American Karens? American <laughs> chop that head off, it's so old. Bryson, change your name, you can do it, honestly. I'm betting the brunt of it. You're the nicest Karen I've ever met. Oh my God, I'm not Karen, it's Karan. <laughs> wow. That's just what a Karen would say. Thank you, Karan.